everybody, AJ Rizek here. Today we're going to take a look at Ubuntu Mate version 14.10. This is the first official release of this distribution. Uh, as of yet, it is not an official Ubuntu distribution, but uh, you know, I've I've got the feeling that it's on its way and and it will be soon. Um, let me drag over Firefox here so we can take a look at this distribution's homepage. And uh, just a little bit about the, the Mate desktop environment. Uh, you know, a few years ago, well, more than a few years ago now, but, but anyway, when GNOME 2 uh, evolved into GNOME 3, there were a lot of people that were unhappy with the new desktop interface. Uh, so there was a forking of the old GNOME 2 code, and there were a variety of desktop environments that evolved from that. One of those is Mate, which is uh, their their goal was to try to basically recreate that that GNOME do desktop environment. And I think they've done a pretty good job of that. Um, and I mean, here's right here is the Ubuntu Mate website. Uh, you can go take a look at it if you like. I'll throw a link up on the uh, down in the description of the video here. Uh, and I'm gonna, not going to read through all this, but some of their goals, uh, accessibility all regardless of language and physical ability, increasing both Ubuntu and Mate desktop user adoption, Ubuntu alternative for computers that aren't powerful enough to run a, compo a composited desktop. And, and that's one of the key things that I think they, they really hit on here. Um, I mean, if you come down here to the hardware requirements, the minimums, Pentium 3 700 megahertz processor. I mean, that <laughs> yeah, you got to go pretty far back to find a a, a processor that's that uh, that slow. Um, I put this on a uh, just to see what it would do. I put this on an old. Um, it was a Dell. Uh, the latitude what six it was either 600 or 610 either way anyway one of those older Dell single core uh, one gigabyte of RAM uh, 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 laptops and everything ran fine uh, you know wasn't quite as snappy as on my quad core desktop but uh, you know like I said everything worked fine so anyway, look back to the minimum requirements, the Pentium 3, 700 meg, 750 megahertz, 5, 512 megabytes of RAM, 8 gigs available hard drive space, uh, bootable DVD-ROM, and that's not even necessarily a requirement as long as you got a USB that you can boot from, uh, keyboard and mouse, of course, video adapter, monitor, sound card, speakers, or headphones, and... Uh, the recommended and basically from from this point or better on on uh, on specs you're going to get optimum performance core 2 duo at 1.6 gigahertz and, and i mean you can pick up a 7 or 8 year old laptop that's got that kind of performance so that's no problem here 2 gigs of ram no problem there 16 gigs of of available hard drive space i mean just kind of going through all this you know, it's fairly easy to get good performance out of this distribution. Uh, looking at, you know, what, what uh, you know, watching my system here right now, and I am, you know, I'm running Firefox, I'm running my webcam, I'm running um, a Conky monitor, I am running my screen recorder, couple other things running in the background and I'm still running less than 900 megabytes of RAM. Uh, my CPUs are running, I got one CPU running 60%, one of them's not even showing, the other two are right around 10%. So I mean it's it doesn't use a whole lot of, of system power to run everything. Baseline I think I was running like 350 to 360 megabytes of RAM uh, so I mean that's that's about half of what uh, well not quite half but but remarkably less than say uh, uh, 
the GNOME desktop or uh, the Unity desktop, definitely less than Cinnamon. Those are all in the usually the 600 to 700 range for a baseline. Um, it's a tiny bit more than than uh, the XFCE desktop, and of course, it's definitely not as lightweight as Lubuntu, uh, which is you know you usually idling uh, what 150 or so on on megabytes of RAM. So you know not quite that light, but there's a lot of custom customability I guess you could say uh, you can really really customize this desktop and uh, you're not really lacking on features so I mean that's a big plus right there so let's take a look around this desktop see what we've got here um, I have not done anything to the default look I want to do to start this video out showing you what it looks like uh, you know in stock form and actually I'm going to make a follow-up video to show you some of the stuff that you can do to customize this desktop because I mean right now looking at it it, it has a very much uh, old school Ubuntu look to it uh, but it's really customizable so there, there's a lot that you can do with this thing here um, and I'd just like to show you some of the stuff you can do in that video and like you can add uh, Compiz or Kwin uh, so that you can have those wobbly windows desktop cube all those different effects um, so I'll kind of go over all that stuff in that video and, and once I get that video done um, I'll throw a link up on here just so you can find it anyway so we got a top panel we got a bottom panel up on the top we've got our various menus here and this is the sort of the old-school no menu in that you've got an applications category and then a places uh, which is you know your home folder desktop uh, you know the various hard drives uh, and maybe USB sticks that sort of thing that you connect it got connected you can get a little search for files down here and then recent documents and then system this will be your preferences admin stuff control center uh, shutdown log out all that kind of stuff um, you can do desktop icons if you like Personally, I'm a kind of person that I want nothing on my desktop, but if you're somebody that likes the little folder icons or the quick launch icons on your desktop, you can set it up that way. And if you click on the date and time there, it will show you, you know, your little calendar there. Uh, and if you click over, actually I don't even think you need to click, just hover, yeah, just hover over your weather and it'll tell you what the current weather conditions are in your area and that is configurable I mean I've gone and set that up myself uh, for my area but if you just go to uh, where is it preferences yeah and then choose 12 or 24 hour clock all those different settings your locations which I'm in the Cincinnati area so it's using that for my location and then I did the same thing for the weather and then went to US units of Fahrenheit for our temperature miles per hour for wind speed that sort of thing over here on this side the little red dot that's just the indicator for my uh, my screen recorder but then we've got our volume uh, internet um, connection uh, on off button right there down here on the bottom you can see our working applications uh, this little button right here in, in the middle or over on the left hand corner I really thought that was a neat feature in that it'll minimize all of your uh, all of your windows so you can see the desktop which can be pretty useful uh, got our trash can over here and then our various workspaces you can switch between the workspaces and then also you can go and just by you can just see how many windows are open on a particular workspace and you can drag and drop from there as well so nice little feature on that now one thing I did find when I set this uh, when I when I set up this uh, this desktop environment is since I'm running dual monitors and I, and I do that so that uh, I've got the extra space when I'm running these videos uh, 
I wasn't able to switch between which monitor was monitor number one, which was monitor number two, and the panels always show up on monitor number one. So, and I was like, okay, well, how do I get it to show up? Well, actually, because of how configurable uh, this this desktop is, it's not actually necessary. You can go and move manually move a panel from one monitor to the next, or if you want to have panels on both. Uh, you know your primary and secondary monitor you can do that and you can have different uh, functioning applets on all the different panels as far as applications go we got a standard Ubuntu affair here you know LibreOffice for the office suite um, you know Thunderbird for our email so I'm, I don't really want to go through all of the applications I I do want to highlight some important differences and probably the biggest one there is our file manager which is called Kaja now Kaja it is a fork of uh, Nautilus which is now called GNOME files which is the file manager used in Ubuntu and then also in in a bunch of other GNOME based distributions um, but in in the past few years, uh, the GNOME the GNOME project they've stripped out a lot of the features from from GNOME files. Fortunately, Kaja still has a lot of those. Let me go and open it up here. Uh, probably the number one thing that I like. Well, there's tons of stuff I like about this this uh, file manager, but my favorite feature is dual pane. To me, this is you know this is the most uh, useful feature you could find. Yeah, some of your file managers can do a tabbed interface, but this you can look side by side, compare, contrast, drag files over. I mean, it, the it's just so much more useful. Why they got rid of this feature, I have no idea. Because I don't know. I just. I go go on a lot about the dual pane, but it, until you've used it, you don't realize how useful it is. Um, but lots of other you know useful features here. Do properties open? Um, I believe. Yeah, you can open as admin. That's a big one there. Um, open as something in a terminal. Send to. I mean, you can see there's just tons and tons of options there. Um, but yet the interface is not too cluttered sometimes uh, and, and you know in KDE camps um, uh, Dolphin is better but definitely the the um, the earlier file manager what was that uh, Conquer I think it was called with very cluttered interface but you know this is you've got plenty of features but it's not so cluttered that you can't find the stuff that you need so I really really like this file manager so if uh, you know if you use the old GNOME 2 interface or even if you've used Ubuntu uh, for setting up and configuring the panels you're gonna you're gonna be right at home here simply right click um, you can do a new panel you can add various applets to panels you can see there's a quite a quite a variety of, of things that you can add to these panels um, you know customize the heck out of it um, you can add more panels so if you want to add one <clears throat> that will be say over here on the left hand side and have it working like the unity launcher you can do that you can have the panels auto hide you can have them always show you can custom color them all kinds of stuff you can do with it so uh, you know very customizable right click on the desktop and you can change your desktop background there's other uh, you got a main systems settings where you can go and, and access also quite a variety of wallpapers that came by default and it looks like this one is a uh, yeah it's a slideshow so very cool on that and of course you can add more fonts they, they've gone with the standard Ubuntu fonts but you know you can go and change them whatever works for you 
and then themes you can see that we've run in the the ambient theme which is uh, you know essentially the same thing as what we see on a standard Ubuntu distribution uh, I was looking at some of these a little earlier today and uh, you know you've got quite a variety here uh, and once again you can go and install others um, you know or switch them around go with whatever works for you I always think that the dark themes are neat looking downside typically is that um, uh, you, you end up with bad visibility on a lot of your uh, applications so it's kind of a bummer on that um, because like I said I like the looks but visibility kinda of sucks on a lot of the distributions um, but like I said, you get by default, you got a bunch of different ones here. So, you know, find something that you like or download something. Um, place I usually go to um, define themes is uh, Gnome Look. I just go there. And uh, what you want, you're going to want GTK2 because that's what. Um, that's what you're using uh, with this distribution there there is no at least at this time uh, there is no support for GTK 3 um, but you know you can see there's there's quite a variety of uh, themes here so uh, you know if you don't like the default themes that came with it find something that you like And while we're talking about preferences, of course we are. We were just at this appearance. Like if you go to Control Center, um, you know you got links to you know I got my Synaptic on there. Ubuntu Software Center, the software update, time and date. Um, you know everything is right in one place, which is very nice. Um, how you want the window behavior to work, all that kind of stuff file management, your about me, preferred applications, all that stuff is right here. Well that about finishes things up for this video. Like I said, I will have a follow up video. I'll throw links up on here as soon as it's done. Uh, show you how to add comp is, um, do some more tweaking of the desktop, uh, add some themes, all that kind of stuff. and. Uh, you know, maybe it won't be set up the way that uh, that you would want, but at least gives you some ideas of uh, maybe not necessarily what you want to do, but what you don't want to do to your desktop. <laughs> anyway, thanks a lot for watching. As always, be sure to uh, subscribe, thumbs up if you uh, like the video. Uh, those thumbs up are always nice. Or thumbs down if you didn't like it. What you know, whatever works for you. Anyway, thanks a lot again, and we will see you on the next video.